What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Long Island Fish Guy here. If you watched my last video, my September Around the Island update, you'll know what I talked about. This tank over here, my 29 gallon, I had a little bit of an issue. Let me explain. But before we get into the Kalamanus worms, if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming out with content every single Sunday moving forward. So let's get into the colonnades worms. Which is a parasite. It's a parasite that you can see red little things coming out of their butts. Now I noticed this and really didn't know how to treat it. I was treating it just like anybody else would have with internal parasites. Start treating it with things like General Cure, Prazipro, maybe up the salt in your freshwater tanks, increase the heat a little bit, but that wasn't gonna work. And here's the reason why. These parasites are so advanced and so beyond their time. They're like the new iPhone. But here's the thing, that makes it very hard for us as the Aquarius to kill these parasites. Now, what, what can we do? Let me tell you. Now, one thing we can do is use something called Levemensol. Now, I don't have any Levemensol on me right now, but this basically paralyzes what's inside of these fish's butts. Now, by paralyzing them, what you need to do is water changes. And these water changes need to happen often. I also know that the Levemensol is something that, you know, that you have to have the lights turned off for inside. Some people even wrap their tanks in tinfoil for it. Now, the hard part about that is it doesn't actually kill the parasite. It actually just paralyzes it. And it gets removed from the tank by you doing water changes on the tank. I didn't like that. So what I use is something called Benzidol or Fabenzidol, they both goes by both names. What this does is this actually kills the parasite, the parasite itself. Now this parasite, Calamanus, has different types of life forms. It lays its eggs, it has those eggs hatch and become larva, and then when those larva actually hatch, and or when those larva actually grow, those are the actual Calamanus worms. And these things are red because of the blood that they eat from our fish. So when actually doing this treatment, I've lost countless fish. I would say I've lost maybe two thirds of the fish that are inside this tank. It was pretty upsetting, I'm not gonna lie. I kinda didn't know what I wanted to do with this tank. For all my long time subscribers, I have incredible fish inside this tank. I have geophagus fry, I had a beautiful angel fish, I had a discus in this tank, some really nice fish. I had quarries that were with me since day one of restarting in the hobby. But luckily I have a few tanks down here that kind of kept me busy and kept me positive and kept me motivated. Like Georgie. Hi Georgie. Hiya. For those of you new to my channel, that's my Oscar and his name is George. So in losing those fish, I had plenty of other ideas. Maybe even restarting the tank. Some people who would get Calamianus worms, what they even do is restart. They take every, all the fish out, they euthanize it, they wash everything down, throw everything out, and basically restart their tanks. But I said, no, I'm gonna continue with this. So what you do with this treatment is you actually treat three days in a row by treating the food that gets actually inside. And then you treat the water itself, just to be extra clear. Since this medication doesn't actually kill the eggs, these eggs will hatch. So these eggs need to be treated for when they actually hatch. And it's two weeks later. Two weeks later is when you wanna use this treat, the, the benzodiazepine or the benzo. And after that, you're done. My tanks happily do not have any more calamanus in it. I have not lost any fish in a few days, which is obviously a good thing. And you will lose fish. And the reason why is because there's something called the death effect or the death reaction. Now, if you have fish in there that are loaded up with these calamanus worms, what will happen is there's so many in there and they get stuck in there. But unfortunately, the fish is unable to pass it and the fish dies. Now, that's the majority of what happened to my fish. I actually didn't see the red worms but they did die of this parasite because I opened them up and saw the red worms. These columnus worms that were so lodged inside of my keyhole cichlids butt were like lodged in like this for like two days and I thought he was gonna die. He actually passed it. And now there's like a spot missing where his butthole used to be. 
No, it's kind of crazy that he's even still alive. But at least he is alive, and that's all that really matters. And he's kind of a cool fish to look at now, um, especially because that little spot in his butthole is kind of missing. So if this has ever happened to you, let me know your experience with this calamitous in the comments section below. Let me know if you have any questions about actually treating it. It was definitely a bad experience, but a learning experience. And I'm making this video to hopefully show you guys it does get better. It does. So like I said, let me know what you think in the comment section below, your experience with these Calaminus worms. Also, smash that like button. And if you do like this video and like content like this, be sure to subscribe and there's a notification bell. Make sure you hit that too.